Okay, so as you can imagine, it's very important that mistakes in DNA replication are minimized, and there are three ways that um, this happens. So there's presynthetic error control, and this is basically when there's an enzyme that checks to make sure that the base is complementary to the parental strand before it is added to the three prime ends. So trying to catch it before it's added. Um, there's proofreading, and this relates to the three prime to five prime exonuclease activity of DNA polymerase three that I described. Um, Again, I think this is really important. I think I got a question wrong on my exam last year because I didn't think it was important to memorize this, so memorize it. it probably is good for at least one point. Um, and then there's also a mismatch repair system, so I'm going to go into this a little bit more. If you want to figure out or learn more about the 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity, there is a great slide about it in the lecture. Um, so going into the mismatch repair, I drew a little picture of it. Um, basically, you need to know that... The parental strand of DNA is going to be methylated, and the new strand is not. So this hemimethylation is required for the mismatch repair system to work. If um, both strands are methylated, then the system will not work because it recognizes them both as parental strands. Um, if When it's hemimethylated, then it knows that one of them is probably just synthesized, so it's going to go in and look for errors on this. Um, so basically... What happens in this is mutes S and mutes L add in a complex fueled by the hydrolysis of ATP. So this is what we see here. We see the ATP molecule. And they add to the um, DNA double-stranded molecule. So mute H then nix the daughter strand with the hydrolysis of another ATP. So this is mute H being added. Um, it actually nicks it not at the place where there's a mistake. Oh, I forgot to say the mistake is, in this drawing, it's a little pink mark. It's where there's two DNA bases that aren't complementary each other that got past the presynthetic error control and the proofreading control. So um, now the mismatch repair has to come in and fix it. So uh, as I said, the mute H will come in and cleave the new daughter strand um, down from the mismatch, which is covered by the mute S and mute L. And now another ATP is hydrolyzed and the mute L and mute S complex cleaves the daughter strand at the site where the strands were mismatched. So it's already cleaved down here and now mute L and mute S is going to cleave it where the mismatch was, right around here. And then this whole little portion is not held by anything now so it's just going to leave. Um, so now there's a gap in the daughter strand, and DNA polymerase 3 and SSB are going to come in and synthesize DNA in the gap that was left. Hopefully they'll do it correctly this time, and um, that's how the mismatch repair system works. Okay, so throughout this video I've been talking about DNA replication in prokaryotes, as I mentioned earlier, and more specifically in E. coli, where a lot of these enzymes have been isolated from. So now I'm going to talk about the many important differences that are observed in DNA replication in eukaryotes. Um, so first of all, there are different DNA polymerases. Two that are in eukaryotes are DNA polymerase um, sigma and epsilon. And this is most similar to polymerase, DNA polymerase 3 in prokaryotes um, because it has the 3' prime to 5' prime exonuclease activity that sigma and epsilon do, which I know I keep talking about. Um, it's pretty important. Also in eukaryotes is DNA polymerase alpha, and alpha, DNA polymerase alpha synthesizes a short RNA primer followed by a longer stretch of DNA before polymerase sigma or polymerase epsilon take over. So um, this has another counterpart in prokaryotes called primase, which I didn't fully, I didn't really go over, but I kind of briefly talked about how the polymerase 3 requires an RNA primer, so primase does this for polymerase 3. DNA polymerase alpha does it in eukaryotes. And eukaryotes also have a DNA polymerase gamma. And um, this is responsible for mitochondrial, mitochondrial genome replication. Mitochondria have their own set of mitochondrial DNA, and this is what replicates that. Um, another difference between eukaryotes and prokaryotes is eukaryotes have PCNA that act instead of beta clamps. And I didn't really talk about beta clamps, but um, they're associated with polymerase activity. So the DNA molecules pass through the beta clamps as they're being replicated. 
um, in prokaryotes and eukaryotes, pCNA performs this function. And another important difference between eukaryotic and prokaryotic replication is I mentioned that prokaryotes have the one origin of replication, or AC, but in eukaryotes there's actually multiple origins of replication. And um, this is important because the genome is much bigger, first of all, and the DNA polymerases move slower, actually, um, probably to produce errors. So it's important that there's multiple origins of replication so it doesn't take forever to replicate this genome.